Hi there, folks, and welcome to this lesson in your first day in the terminal. So you've made the leap and decided that you want to start to learn the terminal, whether it's for productivity, whether you just need it for a class or for work, or if you've just decided it's just time to learn a really useful tool. You see, working in the terminal can be advantageous because you usually get the full control of the tools that you need. Because there's just some things that you can't do in a graphical user interface. For example, if you're trying to automate something or some process, it's much easier to do in the terminal. The terminal also gives you a little bit of a snapshot into what's going on in your operating system. So it's a really useful skill to learn. And I'm going to show you the basics in just a few minutes, and then you can continue on. So let me go ahead and show you what we're talking about here. We're talking about this guy, the terminal here where you can type in different commands, move to different directories, and so on. And what the terminal is going to do is allow you to, again, move fast and quick so that you can do different actions and automate different things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. The good news is, regardless of the operating system you're on, you probably have a terminal, whether it's a Windows machine, a Mac machine, or a Linux machine. But today I'm going to show you how to get started on Linux. That's what I'm using here and is what's most often used with a terminal environment. And that way you'll have a consistent environment that you can use. And again, a lot of these skills are transferable. So I'm going to show you how to get started on Ubuntu here. What you're going to want to do is, if you're starting from scratch, is to download Ubuntu here. And you're going to download the Ubuntu desktop version. Usually the latest version is what you'll want to do. And you don't have to contribute anything, though I'm sure they would uh, welcome your contributions. So I'll go ahead and just put this um, to zero. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and move on here. And it'll take a moment and you'll see it download in the bottom right corner of your screen. Now I've already got this set up for you. Now, what are you going to need to get started here? Well, for me, I'm on a Linux machine, as you can see here. It probably looks like a different environment than you're used to, but this is the default sort of setup for Ubuntu in the background. And if you're on a Mac machine or a Windows and are downloading Ubuntu and want to get started, what you'll need is some way to emulate an operating system. And this can be something new for folks, but let me give it a shot. And for the most part, consider this part of the lesson optional if you've already got an environment where you're comfortable working on the terminal. So what we have here is your operating system. So this is your Windows machine here. You know, you've got your keyboard here, uh, your mouse, and whatever else set up here. And in your system, what you're going to usually be doing is running your you know, Windows operating system or Mac or whatever it is. And you have your different applications that are running here. So let's say this is Windows. You've got your little login there, the time, and so on. But what we're going to do is open up what's called virtual box or some other emulator. And this is just an application. So this is a virtual box here. I'll draw a little arrow to it. Virtual box. And there's nothing virtual about it in the sense of virtual reality, but just virtual in the sense that you're going to emulate another operating system in your current operating system. OK, so within this operating system here, I can run Linux, for example. And it's just going to be running in this window on its own. While you might have in the background your Windows or whatever uh, other applications that you're running. So that's the idea of VirtualBox. And it's going to give us this Linux environment where we can further learn the terminal and various skills for typing out different things. OK, so if you've already got a terminal, you can follow along with the rest of this lesson. It'll be very short. But if you're wanting to set up a Linux environment and learn some terminal, then we'll continue with the next steps. All right, so I'll be here and I'm going to guide you through these next steps here. So what you can do is go to downloads on VirtualBox and download for your appropriate system. So if you're on Windows, you'll download the Windows host. If you're on Mac, you'll download the OS X host. And if you're on Linux and want to still download VirtualBox, then you can do so as well. So just go ahead and click on this if you're on Windows. And the Windows download will begin here. You'll see it in the bottom uh, right corner or bottom left-hand corner of your screen. 
And you can do the same for Mac. And you'll see the downloads also going here. I'm going to cancel these because I already have VirtualBox set up. Now, a word that you might want to know of about is that the newer Macs, if you have an M1, you might need a different virtual machine to get started. So there is something called the um, mac.getutm.app here, which allows you to run different operating systems on your Mac. So for instance, you can see this application running in Mac here and playing the Windows operating system. And it's pretty cool. And it's supposed to work very well for the new Macs. So what you can do is go to the gallery here and just download whichever version of Ubuntu here that you'd like. And that should work for Mac. So if you're having trouble with VirtualBox, you can try this as an option. There's other options as well, like this uh, KeyEMU or QMU uh, that also emulates a operating system within it. And finally, if you're a student, you might be able to get this for free VMware, or if you're part of a business, you can get VMware and download this. And this is sort of one of the latest and greatest or most professional versions of emulation that you can do. Okay, so once you've downloaded Linux, and once you've downloaded some virtualization tool like VirtualBox, you can start running your operating system. So let me go ahead and show you how to do this. So what I do on Linux is I have VirtualBox already installed here. So I'm going to open it up and you're going to see that I have a few other uh, different VirtualBoxes installed. But what you'll do is you can go in either this file that you downloaded, you can either um, double click it depending on what version you've downloaded, or otherwise, you would go through and click Import Appliance. And you could search for it here, and it'll bring up a dialog. And you can usually find the operating system that you're trying to download. Maybe it's in Documents or wherever it is. OK, so what you'll want to do next is, once it's installed, and it'll take a few moments to install, is just double click on the virtual machine. Now, the one I have is the one that uh, I've already pre-built. So it should be uh, up and running. So again, we're just trying to get the, to the terminal here. And setting up virtual box is not the main goal of this lesson. I just want to get you started on the terminal with a few of the basics. OK, so it'll take a few moments to launch. And there are some different settings depending on what tool you're using to do your virtualization to speed this up or give it more resources to run. So be sure to check your settings if it's taking a really long time to get started. All right, so my virtual machine is up and running. So again, you can see that I have this totally different operating system running within my other operating system. But I'm going to make this full screen now so that you can see everything all at once. All right, so I made it a little bit bigger, so that's better. So again, this is your first time in the virtual box. Now, this is a particular version that I give to my students. So you can see that it's for my particular courses, and I have some notes that I give them. So something that's kind of cool if you want to think about VirtualBox later and adding on to it is that you can prepare an operating system and distribute it to your friends or to yourself and always have a version of a consistent environment. So if you do a lot of installs or buy a lot of new uh, machinery, often it can be really useful to have this. So anyway, let's get to our goal of the terminal. And what we do is we have this terminal window here. I accidentally close it, I can go to the left side here, and here's how I get to some common applications that I have. The terminal will usually be in the top left corner. If you have a Windows key, you can press it and just type in terminal, and it will bring it up here, and you can also click on it. If I accidentally minimize it, I can go ahead and just click on it again here and bring it back. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and type in clear to clear out this message. Sometimes you'll see me just press Control L, and that will also clear out the screen. OK, so your first commands. The first things first is you want to know, where am I in the terminal? So you might just type in PWD, and that gives you your path. OK, so you can do slash home slash user. That's where you currently are. And it's a little bit hard to know sometimes when you're first getting started the mental model. So you can try typing xdg dash open and then a period. And if you're in a Linux environment, this will bring up the folder location where you're at. And this can help us build our mental model of figuring out where we are in the world here. So this folder, which I'm in, is the same as I have here. 
Let's do another one. So if I type in ls here, that'll list the files and folders of the current directory that I'm in. So if I look through this, I see cpp, here's cpp, desktop, here's desktop again, documents, here's documents, and so on. So I can see all the current files and folders with ls in my current path. Now, if you're having trouble remembering what some of these commands are, there is a built-in manual for Linux users and terminal users. And most of the time this will work in most terminal environments as well. But you can type in man ls and it will give you a brief synopsis of what the command is and a full description. You can hit enter a couple of times uh, or hold it down and it will continuously scroll. Or you can press space to skip a whole page at a time and then Q to quit or H for help. I'll do H for help just so you can see the different directions uh, and study them later. And then Q when you're done and then Q again. Okay. So now what do I want to do? Maybe I want to navigate into one of these directories, such as this CPP file. So I can go into the directory with CD for change directory and CPP. You'll notice, at least on my machine, that the prompt here changes where I'm entering commands to alert me that, hey, I'm in the CPP directory. The wavy sign or the tilde mark, that's usually by the one in your keyboard, indicates the home folder. So if I type PWD, it now tells me I'm in home slash user slash CPP. Let's practice this command again. XDG dash open. And then the period tells me to open the current directory that we're in. That's what the dot is. It means where are we? We are grounded right here. So open this up. This will open up this CPP folder that I just navigated to. So I can also click on it here and see all the files and folders as well. So I'll go ahead and close this. Okay, so we've learned some of the basics of navigation. What if I want to go backwards though? So I can type cd and then dot dot, and that moves me up a directory. So again, I'll do xdg dash open, and then the period sign to do where I'm at. And you'll see I've again moved up a directory. Or again, if you're used to a graphical user interface, you've moved up a directory from CPP to your home directory back here. And I'll do ls again, just to indicate that. So those are the commands that you'll be using very, very frequently in order to navigate your terminal. And it can take a little bit of time to practice, but I promise this will become second nature and even faster than having to point and click on different folders and navigate your way around. Okay, now that we've done that, how can we speed up this navigation? So let's say we want to navigate to that same folder before. I can just start typing C and then hit the tab key and then that'll auto-complete for me, so I don't have to type things in again. Then if I hit tab again two times, it'll list all the folders there that I want to navigate to. So let's say I want to go into 11 here, and I hit tab again, and then tab a few more times to see if there's anything there. I guess not. Let's go back here. The 10, tab, 9, tab a few times, and then it'll auto-complete to the next project here um, if we want. And we can change into that directory. So I can then just type ls here and see some of the files. Now, if I want to open one of these files, what if I just try typing in open and then main? Hmm, I guess this command isn't here. So it gives me some suggestions if a command isn't there. But remember, I did have that xdg-open command. And then maybe I can try typing in the file there. And what that will do is try to open up this file in whatever the default application is. In this case, it's opening up my terminal, which I don't care for too much. So I'm going to go ahead and click exit here. OK. So let me show you another useful trick for just navigating our terminal. I can just type in the command tree, and that will also give me a visualization of where I'm at in the files that are here. And the dot tells me this is my current directory here. And if I navigate backwards, cd dot dot, and just type in tree again, this will give me, again, a visualization of the different files here, the project folder I'm in, and so on. So I can do my path. So this will help us with our basic navigation. So this should be enough to help get you started and comfortable in running in a Linux environment. You know how to get help with the man page. You know about listing files, changing directories, figuring out your current path, and how to open up applications. OK. so. With that said, I want to go ahead and just say this is an exciting journey you're going on with starting working in the terminal, and often that means working on a Linux environment, as I've demonstrated. 
You've also seen how you can install things on a virtual box very briefly and how you can get some practice or set up different environments that suit your or your company or whoever's needs uh, as you're working. So I hope this has been helpful for you in this quick introduction to the terminal.